I was raised in a Christian family and my mother and father were covenant by background and from the evangelical covenant faith. And so I grew up in that church and eventually we came to Wooddale Church, which is um, affiliated with the Baptist General Conference. And although that was the church that I attended, more importantly, that was the background that I had in my family and my parents were the ones who introduced me to the importance of having God in your life and being connected to God through a faith in Jesus Christ. So that was, that was my faith background. Well, my family and I were Catholics when I was growing up, but when I met Mary in law school, she was an evangelical and introduced me to the Lord in new and powerful ways. And we enjoyed Bible study together. And I started attending her church, Wooddale Church. And uh, we wanted to make sure as we got married that our faith lives were unified as a family. So I joined Wooddale and we've been there ever since. Well, and I think that having time in the morning in particular, before you begin your day, a little bit of time with the Lord, spend time with the devotional, a scripture passage, some time in prayer, and it varies every day. Sometimes you have a little bit more time, sometimes a little bit less, but regardless, starting your day off on the right foot and just asking God, will he please guide you through the course of your day, help you in your words, help you in your actions, and knowing that you're just gonna rest in who God is and that he's gonna lead the way every day. I think when somebody is running for or holds high office, whether it's mayor, governor, president of the United States, voters wanna know and deserve to know who is this person? You know, what shaped their values? Uh, what are their values? Is this a person that's good to their word? Can we count on them? And for me, my faith is very important to me. It influences all that I do, and it informs people about what my values are. And of course, that has a great bearing on how you conduct yourself in public office. Of course, we lean into our faith in challenging times and hopefully all times as well. But in my case, as a young person, I was 16 years old. My mom passed on pretty suddenly. And in that moment, in that chapter of challenge in my life, it was one of the times that I leaned deeply into my faith and turned to it and my faith in God uh, as a source of strength, as a source of reassurance, as a source of comfort, and remembering that hope is, is always with us and our hope is not in these earthly things, but it's in Jesus Christ. But how we approach our decisions together as a couple and we ask for God's guidance it really is a matter of a faith walk and you ask that God light your path and help you day by day to make the best decisions that you can possibly make both in your marriage, for your family, in your career, in all of the decisions that you make. And I trust that He will light our path and He will show us the way. That's probably the most important aspect both in our marriage as well as our family. We hope our children will follow the path that God has laid out for each of them. The separation of church and state was intended to protect people of faith from government, not government from people of faith. And now we have all this revisionism around what was intended and where those lines really are drawn. And I think the founders of this country made it very clear. We were founded as a nation under God. And it's not only in our founding documents nationally, it's in the founding documents of 49 of the 50 states. And so it's very clear what roadmap they put out for us as it relates to faith in the public square. When I think of those who founded this country and we look back on the record of what they said and what they believed, we know that these were people of faith. We look back on, for example, comments that Benjamin Franklin made at the time of the Constitutional Convention. And he spoke of the fact that if a sparrow cannot fall without God's knowledge, is it possible that an empire could rise without his aid? We know that this country was founded by people of faith and that that's a critical aspect of this country's roots. Well, God teaches us and the Founding Fathers confirm that we are to value and cherish life. It's not only what they believe, it's what I personally believe. Our country was founded on the notion that we don't have government or anyone else step in and deny innocent life. We need to cherish, protect, and defend that value through our actions individually and government, uh, and as governor, I did that for eight years, and as president, I certainly would as well. 
A traditional marriage between a man and a woman is a moral building block of our society. Uh, it's in the Bible. God teaches us that. He values traditional marriage as between one man and one woman. Uh, that's something I personally believe strongly and I've always stood for that in my public life and my personal life. I think we all have an obligation to leave the campsite as good or better than we found it. And for somebody who's running for high office and holding high office, you have an obligation morally and from a godly perspective to do your very best to leave it better than you found it. I'm running for president because I love this country and I know it was founded under God. And I've got the record, the results, the experience, the leadership, the judgment, and the values and beliefs to lead it to a better place.